Hello, my name is Brian Casey, Editor-in-Chief of AntMini.com. We're here at the 2019 edition of the RSNA meeting in Chicago. Uh, every year we talk to Dr. Paul Chang of the University of Chicago about different issues in imaging informatics and artificial intelligence. Uh, the last couple of years we've been talking a lot about AI. So, uh, Dr. Chang, um, can you let us know kind of where you see the field going and what you're seeing here at RSNA? Boy, we're really impatient, aren't we? We really <laughs> want that change. You know, it, it, it's interesting. I had, you know, it's only it's early in the meeting, right? Yeah. And uh, and I've only uh, attended a few of the sessions and talked to a few people, but it was a very curious observation I made, which is actually in retrospect predictable. Um, the comments I've been getting now is nothing's changed. This was all hype, wasn't it? We're not seeing any sort of real big gotcha moment. And and it, it remember last year we talked about the Gartner hype cycle that you know we get we tend to oversell and overpromise and it tends to take a lot longer to appropriately consume technology that eventually retrospectively is transformative. And as we mentioned last year, I think machine learning AI is going to follow that similar trajectory. Um, I want to remind folks of it's it, the problem with the Gartner hype cycle is everyone concentrates on the over over hype, you know, and then the trough of disillusionment. Like, oh my gosh, you, you lied to us, this is terrible and all that. What people, and, and that was kind of the vibe I was getting for the first couple days here. You know, oh, I've been looking at the technical exhibits, I've been looking at the vendors, I've been looking at the talks. Nothing's changed. It's the same promise, but no you know, feasibility studies, no real validation in the real world, nothing that's actually going to be impactful. And, and, and I think that's the problem with the Gartner hype cycle. I would rather have people now concentrate on something called Amara's Law which is something that many of us who look at tech transfer and the maturation and adoption of technology try to remind folks. Because the Gartner hype cycle, we shouldn't be concentrating on the predictable trough of disillusionment. What people forget about that hype cycle is we eventually get there. Yeah. We eventually learn to appropriately consume the technology. The problem is it's not sexy then. It takes a lot longer than we propose. So we're all kind of like, eh, whatever. But by the time it actually does transform and, and change our practices of the way we, we treat our patients, it's only in retrospect that we recognize that it was transformative. Oh. Amara's law, which basically states we always tend to overestimate the impact of technology in the beginning, but always underestimate and underappreciate its impact later on. Mm. I think that's a more sanguine view about what we're looking at here. So what I see this year is not depressing or, or a discouragement. I think it actually is the natural kind of way we're going to consume machine learning. It's going to be like any other technology. We're going to consume it slowly. We're going to consume it organically. And only in retrospect will we be able to appreciate how transformative it is. Nothing new, like yeah. PACS. Yeah. PACS in the early days, oh, it's going to change. I can't work this way. It's horrible, horrible. But only in retrospect do we realize it was incredibly transformative. But it was not that kind of overnight thing. It was gradual, organic, and only retrospectively transformative. You know, a, a couple of years ago, Kurt Landlots had a really, really nice quote. I'm sure you've all heard of it. You know, uh, AI isn't going to replace radiologists, but radiologists who use AI will replace radiologists who don't. Now, back then, that was a very important statement because it basically said, hey, AI is important, potentially, you know, impactful, mm -hmm. uh, and you better pay attention and radiology better get engaged. So it was a very important line. I would say now we're moving now where that line needs to be modulated just a little bit. And the reason for it is there's not going to be radiologists who don't use AI. So let me use another phrase. PAX isn't going to replace radiologists, mm -hmm. but those radiologists who use PAX will replace those radiologists who don't use PAX. Right. That's completely true. There are no radiologists who don't use PAX. But the original line that Kurt mentioned kind of implies there's going to, if you don't get stay on board, if you don't get on board in AI, you're going to be a cohort that's going to be deprecated and all that. That never happened. You never saw a tribe of radiologists, Luddite radiologists, no, we're never going to use PACs, we're never going to use, yeah. no, it never happened. It be, and the reason for it is, but there was no particular effort that we had to make. We you know, embraced digital imaging gradually, organically, and in only retrospect do we say, oh yeah, complete transform my practices. So I think the line, radiologists that use AI will replace radiologists that don't, is true in the sense that all radiologists are going to be using these yeah. machine learning tools. So I think uh, this is kind of a natural kind of perspective that we're, we're, it's going to take time now. As someone who's gone through these kind of these, these roller coaster lines where we overpromise and then we're kind of disappointed, it takes a lot longer than we all want. Like I said, this is a healthy sign because remember, just a few years ago we were talking about the fear, right? Hysterical yeah, fear. Yeah, yeah. Oh, AI is going to place radiologists. Now it's changed to impatience. Now, 
I would say that's a little healthier, okay? But the impatience is also not very useful because it's gonna take, as I said, a lot longer for us to consume this appropriately, like it has, it, there's nothing new with AI. So what's going to, so what, what are we gonna have to do to, to get this to be a better, uh, absorbed or better consumed by us. Well, the first thing we need to do is co stop concentrating on capability mm -hmm. and concentrate on use case. And I think this is the early, this is a clear sign and nothing new about AI or machine learning. We've gone through all of this. Um, when we stop talking about AI, when you come and say, hey, Dr. Chang, you know, let's talk about radiology. How can radiology add value to our patients? How can radiology be more efficient, improve quality, reduce variability? Then you know we've matured. The fact that we're actually talking about AI as a particular capability reflects the immaturity of where, we're talk where we are right now. We should not be talking about capability. We should be talking about use case. What are the problems in radiology that need to be solved? And can newer technologies such as machine learning, AI, or advanced uh, other uh, advanced IT, uh, can, it, can they be leveraged to approve those issues? When we start talking about that, then I will feel that we've gone past the trough of disillusionment and are beginning to appropriately consume machine learning. Now, here's the problem with that. We have, uh, as I said last year, we, the analogy I love to use is AI is like a great car, right? Mm -hmm. And the problem is I don't care how fancy that car is, most cars still need gas and roads. And in the context of this analogy, the gas is vetted data yep. and the roads is workflow uh, orchestration that is AI enabled. Um, we have made a little bit of progress over the year on both, we, we're starting to, people, the vendor community and users are beginning to recognize we have to make AI real, we're going to have to start drilling for gas and building roads. Um, so the gas data, you're beginning to see, it's not sexy, see here, that's the problem. In order to make a technology like AI or any transformative technology that is only viewed transformatively, retrospectively, yeah. the, the only way to make it real is to do the boring stuff the infrastructure stuff, the IC, that, that, that isn't sexy, that you don't want to talk about. Well, yeah. you guys talk about, but 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 that's what that's what's happening there. I actually see a lot of progress this year, uh, because I see people understanding we got to do better. We can't continue to to use the first mover we talked about last year about first movers trying to uh, trying to figure out how to get vetted data sets using a brute force method where we hire a bunch of radiologists, get a whole bunch of data somewhere, and 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 vet. that that's not sustainable. That's too expensive. It, it, it's just not going to work. Now you're beginning to see alternative methodologies that can that leverages day-to-day -day workflow, leverages natural language processing, leverages more advanced IT infrastructure beyond an EMR-centric perspective yep. that can leverage this not just for AI. And that's a very important point. I think right now the people when when I speak to CIOs and they say, okay, Dr. Chang, you know, every you know, everyone talks about AI. What should I do to prepare for AI? Yeah. I actually tell them, don't do anything for AI. That'd be silly. It'd be silly to, to invest in IT infrastructure for capability. Yeah. What you want to do instead is invest for an IT infrastructure to address the incoming use cases that mm -hmm. directly address improved efficiency, reduce variability, improve quality. You never want to hitch your wagon to AI. Yeah. You, that's a capability. Yeah. You want to hitch your wagon to analytics, you want to hit your wagon to improved outcomes, improved efficiency. Now, we believe, many of us, I do certainly, that machine learning will play a role. But machine learning is one of many advanced IT capabilities that we're going to have to invest. So to me, what you want to invest is an IT infrastructure that goes beyond an EMR-centric view, yep. right? beyond HL7 and DICOM to an infrastructure that is big data ready. And I have found that strategy to be very useful because right now the C-suite is less interested in investing in AI because it's a catch-22, right? Oh, I can't give you that fantastic AI use case unless you give me infra invest in infrastructure that gives me all the data that I need, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to invest that data unless you give me the killer app. But I can't right. bill you the killer app unless you give the data. That's going to be a hard sell to the yep. C-suite. On the other hand, every day today I get requests for my uh, C-suite on analytics. You know, length of stay, how can we be evidence and data driven in what we do operationally? They are dying for analytics. Well, it turns out that the infrastructure required to feed the big data beast is very similar to the infrastructure required to feed machine learning. But instead of leveraging it, uh, just hitching your wagon to a particular capability, you should hitch your wagon to an infrastructure that allows you to be evidence driven. That's the better way to do it. Now, the, 
it, it still means we have to get beyond the EMR centric perspective. We need to have better data interoperability, all the other kind of challenges. But if you, the first thing is you need to justify the investment in that, that infrastructure. I'm beginning to see headway in that, okay? Not so much being driven by AI, but driven by institutions need to be data driven. So that's a good, that's a good sign. When it comes to workflow orchestration, we're beginning to see baby steps on that. Part of it, that's the roads, okay? The roads is workflow orchestration. We're still kind of, re most of the use cases are still t interacting with our traditional IT radiology stack at the edges. And what I mean by that is they tend to fiddle at the edges. They fiddle at the work list, you know, the prioritization use cases that we see a lot of the vendors doing, or they fiddle at the end. Oh, we'll meet you at the end. The AI will work in parallel with the human, and at the end we'll meet, and I'll give you some screenshots or capture mm -hmm. some cues, right? That's yeah. kind of the typical kind of thing. That's that's kind of the recapitulation of the CAD model. You know, it, it, it's it's nothing really new. That's not fully leveraging the power of machine learning. Uh, we need to have better mechanisms, and that's going to be. And but this is hard, because it, it, it requires the AI vendors to stop viewing themselves as a peripheral to the packs, and it requires the packs people to understand their days are numbered if they don't understand that they have to completely change their infrastructure and their architecture to adopt in real time what I call human machine cybernetic orchestration. Now what do I mean by that? So, that sounds really new agey, doesn't yeah, it? Okay, yeah. but basically what it means, it actually predates computer science. The word of cybernetics means to govern. All right, the idea to be, to, to, to how best to use technology or any sensor information and get feedback to be evidence driven to accomplish some goal. One of the things we have forgotten, and I think one of the reasons that I think contributes to this feeling that we're kind of like hamsters in a cage, concept of burnout and all that, is our IT tools right now are barely able to handle our workflow. Right, uh, that's the one theme I see as I travel around the world. People are just feeling like they're barely hanging on, yeah. and that's a reflection to me of suboptimal human-machine cybernetic workflow orchestration. Our existing PAC systems, speech recognition, EMRs are poorly integrated with how I work, and as a result, I as a human are being forced to do things I'm terrible at. Right. Okay, I'm terrible at remembering things. I'm terrible at measuring things. These are menial tasks that machines should do better. Yeah. It allows me to be more of an executive decision maker than a menial person playing Where's Waldo all the time right. on the data sets. Machines can do that better. But we're not going to achieve that if the pack, if the AI startup still, oh, we're very scared. We don't want to piss mm -hmm. off the PAX vendors. Yeah. And the PAX vendors are saying, well, we want to keep you, at your, keep you as a peripheral. Yeah. It's going to have to require a significant re-engineering of our IT infrastructure, our PACs, our, our EMRs, to be able to adopt machine learning in a way that actually fosters real-time, evidence-driven, machine, human, human, machine, optimized collaboration. That's going to be hard, and that's going to be, uh, that's going to take some time. Now, I think one of the ways you're going to see that is if the PACs, vend if the AI vendors to put it bluntly, grow a pair. They got to yeah. understand that they will not grow, they will not be transformative, they're constantly viewed as an add-on to the PACs. Yeah. They're going to have to redefine and force the PACs vendors, either through collaboration or out, you know, just completely replacing them, redefining what it means and what are, how we work with, with, with technology. Mm -hmm. I think the final thing I would say about this is, to me, I was very intrigued by the speakers yesterday, you know, when Dr. Jackson gave her keynote along with our guest speaker, talk, talking about radiologists have to get out of the reading room, they have to be more human. Not only hu more human to our patients, but more human to ourselves. You know, as I said, one of the common themes I see as I travel is something that, maybe it's because I'm an old person and I, you know, and we just, it, we were different kind of personalities back then. The concept of burnout is a relatively new thing that people mm -hmm. talk about. It's probably not a new thing. It's probably something that we now feel comfortable talking about yeah. and sharing our feelings or whatever. Um, but the, I, I think the real benefit of these newer technologies is that ironically, if we use these technologies, not just AI, because in a way, like I said, I want you to avoid capabilities. I want to talk about use case. I think the concept of like radiomics, for instance, okay, forget that as a, it's kind of a buzzword too with its own hype, but I think the, con the reason why we're talking about it reflects the fact that it says that we as radiologists have to improve the quality of our product, our deliverable. Mm -hmm. We can, can no longer get away with just narrative reports that just basically say, yeah, there's a mask, give me my money. We're going to have to add real value. And I think that's radiomics, even though you may not accept that 
particular kind of way of addressing it. I think it speaks to the fact that we're lack we have to improve the quality of our product, our deliverable. I think AI and machine learning speaks to the fact that we have to improve the way we practice radiology. Because right now, we are doing menial tasks poorly. Mm -hmm. We are feeling like we're hamsters in a cage, we're barely hanging on, we're burning out. I think AI has the potential, machine learning has the potential, if used properly, if integrated and achieving better human-machine collaboration, right, yep. that's evidence-driven, it will allow us to give us, give us more time to be human to ourselves mm -hmm. and then human to our patients. I was very impressed by those speakers yesterday. As an informatician, I say, okay, we have a role to play then. We have to make our technologies, machine learning is one example, to, to, to be properly consumed, properly integrated to achieve uh, optimal human-machine collaborative harmony. Yeah. I know that sounds new agey, but I think that's important to allow us to give us the time to be more human to ourselves and to be human to our patients. Right. And I think that's the real potential for this. We're only going to appreciate it, though, retrospectively. Great. Right. Dr. Chang, some great insights. Thanks for being with us. Thanks. Bye. All right, Brian Casey signing off for AntMini.com.